right, everybody, let's learn Opus 60, number nine. You guys know that I love Fernando Sor. I hope you enjoyed my little performance of this. Um, if you guys want to know more, check out musicandguitarlessons.com. The site's going to be under construction for a little while, so if you show up and all there is is a sign up for my um, mailing list, we'll go ahead and sign up, and, and it's going to turn into a free platform moving forward. Right now it's paid, so I'll be doing the transition soon. So without further ado, let's get after this. So the first thing that I want you to notice is that this is in common time. So we have four beats per measure. It's also in the key of C major. You'll see no accidentals. So let me go ahead and enlarge this on the screen. You'll see no accidentals at all. Let's just run through kind of the chord progression here. We're starting with the C major chord here, and then we move into a G7 chord here with the note D in the bass, which is our second inversion. Then we're moving to another C major chord. He inverts the chord here, and then we move to another G7 chord, and this C sharp here is actually a chromatic passing note to the D up top. So now that we've taken a look at the chord progression for the first part, let me kind of explain how we're going to play this, and then you'll take a listen to what it sounds like. So to begin, we have a C, which is the third fret of our A. We're going to hit that with our thumb, and then we're going to be getting our open G with the index, and our middle finger is going to get the B string, our C, and we're going to get the open G with our index again. And if anybody wants this score, you can download it at the IMSLP. I have it linked below. Excellent free resource you should all do donate to. So we have thumb, index, middle, index, and then we're going to get the ring finger on a high open E open, and we're going to index, middle, index. So we got thumb, index, middle, index, ring, index, middle, index. Next, we're going to be doing open D, and then index, middle, index on the open strings, G and B. And then F is first fret of our high E. So we get the high E with the ring finger, index, middle, index. So thumb, index, middle, index, ring, index, middle, index. And then we're going to go to a C, which is the, low, the third fret of the low A, index for the G, and ring can catch that open high E. And then index after that is another open G. And then we're going to grab <clears throat> the second fret of the D and lift up on that, that C so that we... we the bass note only lasts a half note. We're going to do that index, middle, index um, on the G of B. So we get thumb, index, ring, index, thumb, index, middle, index. And then we're going to get index for the open B, or sorry, middle for the open B, index for the open G. And we're going to go C, first fret, C sharp, second fret, and then D, third fret, and then another index for open G and then middle finger for open B, and then index for open G. Now, when we're doing this, we're doing index, so middle, index, middle, index, middle, index, middle, index. So I'm gonna call out the right hand fingers. As I play this, we have thumb, index, middle, index, ring, index, middle, index, thumb, index, middle, index, ring, index, middle, index, thumb, So that's your first, um, your first uh, line here. Now remember, or not remember, let me tell you something that is going to make your playing a lot better. These, these notes up top with the up beams, I like to play these a little bit louder than the other notes. My teacher, Ben Cantu, brought this to my, my attention many years ago. Um, and it's called voice balancing, and it's very important so that we get this kind of... this melody hanging out up top and it's very audible. Um, next what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going back to the, the original pattern for that first bar in this next bar but we have two up stemmed notes now so we're going to be actually um, accenting and then de-accent it you'll see it's only an up stem the first time around so it's kind of a you want this da da and we're going to get dum, bum. so we want 
right? Same pattern. Then the next one is essentially the same pattern, but right, instead of open D, we're going to a low G here, right? And we have the, right? And uh, when we go back the second time into the, the index, middle index pattern on this, this measure, we're gonna get index, and then middle finger is gonna get the third fret of the B rather than open B the second time. So we get thumb, index, middle, index, ring, index, place that pinky, right? And then after that, we have third finger for C, third fret of the A, index for open G, ring for a high open E, and then we're having index for the C, first fret of the B, then open D, index for the first fret of the B, and then middle finger, and you're gonna use your third finger for this F sharp, um, and then we're gonna get open G, open B, and then third finger, or third fret of the high E for that um, G, same pattern, and then we get third fret of the low E, and then open G. Now remember, those are quarter notes, so those are gonna last a little bit longer, that second line. And so we have C major, and then we get a G7 chord, and another C major, and then it goes to D7, and then to G. So what we have is... Right, and this D7 here is borrowed from G to tonicize the G, which is the fifth chord of the piece the five chord. If you need to know any more music theory, check out my music theory video on my channel. We're going to move to the next section, which starts on the dominant, the five, our five, seven, more specifically, moves to the one, back to the five, seven, and back to the one. So five, seven, one, five, seven, one. And we essentially have the same kind of picking pattern. And then the second time we accent twice. On this last picking pattern, instead of going I am I for the last little figure, we get I am A. So we have. So that part's pretty straightforward. This next part's really cool, um, and it's difficult to to get the um, the accents to sound right. So we have. Notice that those high notes I'm, I'm bringing out, be very patient with yourself on learning to accent those things. It's not easy, it takes a lot of practice. Um, however, let's just kind of discuss this chord progression for just a second. We have an A7 chord here, followed by a D7 chord, followed by a G7 chord, followed by an A minor chord, followed by a D minor chord, a G chord, and a C chord. So the way this, is, this works is A7 is the 5-7 of D. Now, 5-7 of, if you've seen my music theory video, this will be familiar. If not, this is a good concept to know. It's going to create tension that wants to resolve to the chord that it is the fifth chord of. Right? So we resolve to D, and then it immediately turns it to D7 which is the fifth chord of G. But he immediately turns that G to G7, which is the fifth chord of C. But what he gives us is, a, is what's called a, um, a deceptive resolution. So we get an A minor after that, where you go to the sixth of that one instead of the, the one itself. Right, so that gives us A minor. Then we go to our D minor here, which is, you know, it's, it's a predominant chord, so it's our two chord. And then, of course, we have G next, and then he finishes with our C, which is the tonic chord, right? So that's how that progression works. Theoretically, you can check out my music theory video if you want to make more sense, if that sounds like Greek to you. Now, let's kind of run through how to play this. We're going to be doing thumb, index, middle, index. So we're getting second fret of the B for the C sharp and third fret of the high E for your G. Then bum, 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 right? And then we're gonna get open D, and you're gonna grab that C sharp, and then just switch these two. So we're gonna get index, and then what I use is my middle finger and ring finger at the same time on your B and high E to get the third of the B and second of the high E there. Um, and then you're gonna immediately grab that C with your index on the first fret of the B. Right, and then we're gonna get open G, open B, first fret of the high E, open B with that thumb index, middle index, 
um, pattern, and we're going to get thumb, index, middle, and ring, and then index. So we get second of the G for that A, and then open B, and we're going to get first of the B, and open E, and then open B again after that. And we're going to get F, third fret of the D, um, A, second fret of the G, and D, third fret of the B. And then we're going to open G, open B, third fret of the B, open B, first fret of the B for the C, open E, open G, C, um. So that's how to play that piece. This is a lot of fun, guys. Um, I'm a huge fan of Fernando Sor. If you guys have learned number eight, you'll recognize this as a variation of that one. Um, again, this piece is a lot of fun. Fernando Sor, I'm putting up the entire Opus 60 here uh, probably this summer. So um, just about once a week, you'll get a new one. So we're going to be doing number 10 next. Number nine is great. I have a number of them already up, not just one through seven. I also have some other ones I put up out of order. So go ahead and take a look at these other ones if you want to learn some more Fernando Soar. Classical guitar is such a blessing to play, guys. It's not the only kind of guitar out there, and you should play a wide variety of styles, but it really is a cool style. So I will catch you guys soon, and happy practice. Don't forget to check out my website, musicalguitarlessons.com. It will be getting a facelift soon. See you guys.